Hi everybody, my name is Mr. Record from Avon High School and we are going to be talking about topic 8.11 volume with the washer method revolving around the X or the Y axis. Hopefully by now you are somewhat familiar with the disk method approach to finding volumes of solids of revolution. In the washer method we have a slightly different approach that does make things just a tad bit more complicated, but with proper setup, it should be very easy to distinguish between the disk method and you should have a lot of success with it. So what do we have when we deal with this idea of the washer method? Well, if you look here at the first picture on the left, we have this shaded region and it's not currently shaded, but I'm gonna go ahead and emphasize it here with this yellow highlighter. Let's say that that is the region bounded by our curves. We're gonna revolve this particular region around the x-axis. Typically, I would use a dashed line for the axis of revolution. However, since it already is the x-axis, it's kind of tough to do that, but I'll do, oh, the best job here, I guess I can. Now, immediately, whenever you have a picture that looks like this, in other words, your yellow shaded region that's away from your axis of revolution, or this daylight area, this white space that separates, that is going to be your indicator that you're going to use the washer method. And if you look at this washer method setup, it has a lot of very similar characteristics to it as the disk method does. In fact, if I could just temporarily scribble this part away, boom, that is your disk method. But the washer method has this extra component of subtracting this other radius. And now it starts to maybe come together as you see that if you use this capital R of X as your initial radius and revolve that piece around the X axis, you're going to be including some volume or some space that you don't want included, namely this piece. So what you're going to want to do is subtract off this other smaller rectangle that would actually be placed right there if it was in the exact same location as our capital R of X, and that would serve as our little r. Now, for the purpose of this graphic, I put the little r of X in a different location so that you could see it just a little bit better. But the idea is that you're subtracting out the whole. That's really what it all comes down to. If you're setting up your problem with respect to a vertical axis of revolution, such as the y-axis, everything else is the same, except your representative rectangles would be drawn sideways. And of course, finding the length of each of those rectangles would involve a right minus left approach. Off to the right, I just show you an example of a quarter that we can think of as being a disc. And then the item below that is a washer. I only say that because some students tend to be a little confused between the two. And it partly comes from the fact that I've had students in the past think that a disc has a hole in it. And I've always been kind of confused where that was coming from because I would say, well, no, a washer has a hole in it. But these students are thinking about a CD or a compact disc, which do indeed have the little holes in the center. For the purpose of our methods, the disc is a solid with no hole type of slightly uh, uh, thin cylinder where the washer is that same slightly thin cylinder with the hole. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. It says, find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by the graphs of f of x equal the square root of x and y equal x squared about the x-axis. Sketch and graph sketch the graph and draw the representative rectangle. It's about this time that students start to see the benefit of sketching the region. As the problems become more and more complicated, it's going to be a very nice um, uh, tool to use in order to better answer the question. So if I graph the f of x in blue, I would have a point here at 0, 0, and I would have a point here at 1, 1. And that's about the only thing that I can fit along this square root of X. Now, in order to connect those pieces, I would have to draw something that I know to be increasing in concave down. At the same time, if I wanted to figure out 
let's say, a slightly better version of my values in between, I could certainly take the square root of 0.25. I could take the square root of 0.5 and, and do all those things. But it's a lot easier just to kind of envision this as being some concave down increasing curve. It's very likely that I may have inaccurately drawn this, but it doesn't matter in the case of this problem. I just want to make sure that I know which functions on top and which functions on bottom. X squared has the same situation in that I know that it's going to be an increasing concave up graph. And for our purposes, that's going to suit the job. That's going to take care of it and, and that's going to suit our, our fit our needs. We are going to revolve this shape around the x-axis. So let's go ahead and identify this shape by coloring it in. And then the axis of revolution is going to be our x-axis. And then I can draw my little arrow to indicate. Hopefully you all see the fact that there's this daylight that I like to call it, between the axis of revolution and the shaded region, that's going to cause for this to utilize the washer method. We have just enough white space in between that we're going to have holes in our shapes. So we know then that the formula is capital uh, R of X squared minus little r of X squared, all within an integration. Oops, and with a pi in front. Let's put that pi in front now. I'm just basically rewriting the formula because it is not seen in the uh, screen right now. I know that if you're using my notes, you certainly have it there in front of you though. So what we have is capital R of X that's going to have to be identified, which is a rectangle that would look like this. Now notice these rectangles always start at the axis of revolution and they moved all the way to the farthest boundary. That is always going to be your capital R. The formula for that capital R is the top minus the bottom, which in this case would be the blue curve, square root of X, and I'm just for emphasis going to say minus zero. That's our capital R squared. I'm going to erase these boundaries A and B because I think we're going to be able to find them here in just a little bit. Then I'm going to subtract and now we go to our second rectangle which would emanate from the axis of revolution but now it would go to the near side. You'll see that there's a pretty good reason why we call the larger rectangle capital R and the smaller rectangle little r. The formula for that little rectangle again top minus bottom would be the x squared curve minus the zero, just for emphasis, and all of that would be squared. And then this particular expression would be integrated with respect to x using the boundaries that are x values that begin our shaded region, which is at zero, and end our shaded region, which is one. And boom, there you have your setup. Now this is a simple one that we're actually going to integrate it to completion. So we'll do a little bit of simplifying first, not too bad. The square root of x squared is x, of course, minus x squared squared is x to the fourth, of course. And we have pretty easy time now on our hands. We'll go ahead and take this antiderivative. We get x squared over two minus x to the fifth over five with the boundaries one to zero pi out in front, and then if we go ahead and plug in our one, we have one half minus one fifth, and then of course, if we were to plug in the minus zero, we're not going to get anything of significance. And then I believe that one half minus one fifth is indeed three tenths, and the pi we can just put on the top, or you could say three tenths times pi, and that would be your volume. Now I wanna show you a visual demonstration of the shape that we just found. So here I've gone to a website, it's called showdoor.org. It just contains a lot of interactive activities. I'm going to share this with you eventually, uh, both in class and through Schoology in case you ever want to experiment. But as you can see for the function box, I have entered square root of X and X squared and have set the positions to go from zero to one. 
I also have to set my window, which I did in another pull down menu, so that my size of my graph sort of appeared to be similar to the one that you have on your handout. And then you just decide which axis you're going to revolve around. In this case, we're going to revolve around the line y equals zero, which they remind you that that is the x-axis. And you can set the revolution to be fast, medium, or slow. Let's build some suspense here and we'll make it medium. And I'll keep the default colors for blue and evergreen. So here I go. I'm going to push the, re the revolve button. And there we see it taking place and it spins all the way around, and you'll notice that it actually calculated the volume and got 0.942. I'll leave it for you to determine what the decimal equivalent of 3 pi divided by 10 is, but I'm pretty sure that it's 0.942. And then if you want to get a really good look at this, you could kind of cursor over to this shape, and you could start spinning it around and kind of see what's going on. And that's where the the, the coloring comes into play because what you've got is this solid shape that's kind of indicated by this sort of leaf shape. And inside of this, it's, it's a bit hollow, but it's sort of convex instead of being very concave. It's not necessarily the best depiction. It takes a pretty good piece of software to render this uh, pretty accurately, but it does at least give you guys a bit of an idea. Notice we can set it for wireframe or for a solid and in some cases, the solid might be easier. But I think in this case, the wireframe does a little bit better job. Anyhow, this concludes our first video of the washer method. Uh, hopefully, you'll have a chance to, to take a look at some of the other methods as, or the other videos for the washer method as our axis of revolution changes a little bit and begins to get a little bit more challenging each time. I'll see you next time.